Kathy Wood's top stocks is the topic of today's presentation. And the woman that you see here in the picture, Kathy Wood, probably doesn't need an introduction. But for those of you who are unfamiliar with who she is, she's the founder and CEO of ARK Invest and probably the most successful active thematic ETF manager ever. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the difference between active and passive management, it's very important to understand that. So what you'll see is a lot of people going around saying, well, Vanguard and BlackRock invested in this shitty little micro cap. And then when you look and see why, it's because Vanguard and BlackRock don't have a clue what that company does. They're just passively tracking indices. So it's very important to understand when an investment manager makes an active bet versus when they're passively following an index. And Miss Kathy Wood takes active bets on disruptive technology stocks. Now, in the financial world, an asset manager's success is typically measured by the assets they can attract. So at 70 basis points, the $13.5 billion that Miss Wood has under her management generates about $94.5 million annually. That gives her a pretty nice paycheck and allows her to staff a team of solid analysts to um, look at the various stocks she's thinking about investing in and to um, perhaps subscribe to whatever solutions that she needs to properly run her funds. Now, when it comes to performance, of course, she's often in the spotlight, but Poor performance leads to investors withdrawing assets, and as long as they don't withdraw assets, then she's uh, still able to convince them to stick around. So always bear that in mind when you're looking at uh, the performance of ARK's ETFs, because assets under management is a function of inflows and withdrawals along with the movement of asset prices. So it can get very confusing, which is why we strongly uh, discourage investors who try to ape what ARK does. So when ARK purchases shares in a company, everybody on Twitter will post that and nobody puts it into context. How large is the purchase relative to existing holdings? So if it's a new purchase, how large is the purchase relative to all other assets being held? Same holds true for selling, though uh, perhaps uh, completely exiting a position is uh, the most bearish signal that ARK could give. So since ARK is an active ETF manager, their sales or purchases don't necessarily reflect their sentiments. That's very important. Some people will see discrepancies between what they say and what they do, and that's why aping any active manager is a bad idea. If you want ARK to guide the direction of your portfolio, invest in their ETFs. And their largest ETF, you can see here, uh, ARKK is the symbol, and this is Kathy Wood's flagship ETF that invests in disruptive technology such as AI, DNA sequencing, robotics, energy storage, blockchain, and the like. You can see how that stacks up to other active ETFs, and this flagship fund holds the highest conviction stocks uh, of ARKs entire selection. Now, before we get into looking at those, I wanted to touch on the size of her funds. So here you can see the flagship fund, ARKK, absolutely dominating the rest. So it's highly likely that whatever stocks are the top conviction stocks for Kathy Wood, they'd probably be found in this flagship fund. Now, when we start to look at Kathy's favorite stocks, things can become difficult. So what we did is we took a spreadsheet and downloaded every single asset that ARK holds and the weightings. And you'll start to run into some problems when you take this approach because that sounds like a simple way to do it, right? Find out all the assets they hold, how they're weighting. Top ones are their high conviction holdings. Well, it becomes tricky when you start from the bottom up because if you look, for example, at Trimble, okay, in all of ARK's assets, Trimble has a 0.6% weighting. That's really low. But then when you look at ARK's autonomous technology ETF, this asset holds a 6.5% weighting and an 8% weighting in their space ETF. So you can't call it low conviction if it's a top holding in two of her ETFs. So that approach you have to be very careful about. But what you can do is start from the top down and look at assets held 
among one or more ETFs. So this is an interesting picture here, which shows in orange there, you can see assets that are held in three or more ETFs. So you have Tesla, UiPath, Coinbase, Block, Shopify, DraftKings. Certainly, you would then consider those high conviction. And one of the observations to make here is that if uh, Kathy Wood wants to overweight Tesla and she's already maximized the weighting for her flagship fund, and perhaps she might find a home for it in some of her other ETFs, and maybe that's what's going on here. So Tesla is the number one holding in three of five ETFs. So one way we could assess her high conviction holdings is by looking at how many ETFs they're in. Now, we need to put this into context. So the only bullish bearish signals ARK gives is when they enter or exit a position. So everybody noted that when they re-entered Palantir recently, that was a bullish signal. But again, you need to put that into context of how much that position represents in uh, terms of the total assets that ARK has under management. So um, you need to consider ARK's convictions in the context of each ETF. So, for example, in ARC's Space Exploration ETF, Iridium Communication is their number one holding, but it also happens to be their ETF that has uh, the least amount of assets under management. So, uh, that uh, also tells you something. But um, Tesla being the top holding in three of five says a lot. And um, as we said, stocks held across multi multiple ETFs show bullishness, but if the aggregate weighting is also high, it should always be, and we'll touch on that. Another thing that we noted when looking at ARK's assets or the stocks they choose to hold is this idea of principal shareholder status. So a principal shareholder is a person or entity that owns 10% or more of a company's voting shares. This gives them significant influence over that company, allowing them to vote on appointing the CEO and board of directors. So when we look at companies that Kathy Wood has principal shareholder status in, you can see the names here and some stand out, Ginkgo being one. We've written extensively about Ginkgo. Pacific Biosciences, we wrote a piece recently on that firm. And then you have Teladoc, which is uh, one of ARC's high conviction holdings, and then Beam Therapeutics you see there. And then you have some other names here, smaller firms. Uh, looks like there's a SPAC in there, Mark Forged. So these are companies that Kathy Wood probably has a lot of visibility into because of her principal shareholder status. Now, when we look at the size of the companies held by ARC, this is quite interesting. So we don't invest in ETFs, and we noted that, uh, well, ARC's actually holding one of their own ETFs inside one of their ETFs, which is sort of a, well, they probably account for that. You don't want to um, pay fees twice. I'm sure they're accounting for that, but um, we don't hold ETFs because we feel that's kind of a weak way out. There's some very good ETFs out there, but it's a lazy way out when trying to invest in a theme, so we don't do that. Um, we also don't invest in companies unless they have significant revenue, which we would count as uh, $10 million per annum or more, though we do make some exceptions, perhaps in gene editing and drug discovery, so you can see there prime medicine being one of those exceptions. And then we don't hold firms with a market cap of less than a billion dollars. That's a pretty uh, bog standard rule you'll find in, uh, with index providers is that they'll have a market cap cutoff, and that's where ours sits. It's a pretty round number. You can see in um, what is that pink on the right there. Uh, it says uh, well, pink or orange. Um, you can see all the names that have a market cap of less than a billion dollars. And while we've written about companies like Invite and Codexis and Materialize, CareDX, Archer, Twist, uh, these are firms that fall under our market cap cutoff. We've always been surprised that ARC dabbles in such small firms. Organovo was one example of a very, very small firm that they dabbled in, and I don't believe they're holding that anymore. Then when it comes to firms that are very large, so we've highlighted in yellow here towards the bottom, all the companies that 
are above a $500 billion market cap. Now, uh, we're holding NVIDIA. We've been holding NVIDIA for quite a while. We're also trimming that because it's overweight in our portfolio. But typically, when a company gets this large, we're trimming it. So, uh, that we wouldn't you know, actively move into a very, very large company because it's hard for them to generate alpha the larger they get. Though uh, Tesla could be an exception. Uh, we've written about them and uh, in, in separate pieces. Now, ARC holds uh, 118 stocks across all their active ETFs. And of those, the 36 that you see here, we wouldn't invest in based on our methodology. That means invest now. Or as I said, we're holding NVIDIA. And um, I personally hold shares of Tesla outside of our tech portfolio, but uh, that's a different story. So filtering by growth, this is another thing that we looked at in terms of ARC's universe. And here we isolated all companies that had single-digit growth last year or a three-year CAGR compound annual growth rate in the single digits. And you can see the names here. And uh, there are some firms that we're holding there, Teradyne and Trimble and CRISPR. Uh, again, the gene editing names are going to be different. The, the growth is down the road for companies like that or for Ginkgo or the AI drug discovery company. So ARC has this rule, and I tried to find it prior to this presentation. I couldn't, but it's this rule of thumb that a company needs to have a 15% a growth potential every year going forward for five years or some rule to that extent. And someone said recently that's why they weren't holding Pure Storage, a company we wrote about recently that has growth just in the single digit. So uh, that's another thing to consider here is ARC's revenue growth rules and how much tolerance they have for growth lagging. Now, another metric that we looked at and applied to their stock universe was this uh, gross margin filter. So gross margin determines how profitable a company can be uh, eventually or how quickly they can switch to profitability when the time comes. So they'll typically spend a lot of money on sales and marketing, trying to capture as much market share as possible, and they start running out of money, then they need to uh, tighten that down and achieve profitability. You see that happening with a fair number of stocks these days. What we did is identified anything with a gross margin of 25% or less, and you see the names here. Adyen might be an exception. We're actually holding Adyen, and that's an exception just because of their business model. Uh, BYD is another interesting firm we're going to be doing some research on. Be sure to subscribe to our channel because uh, we'll be putting out a piece on BYD and some other of the companies list that we're going to talk about today. Rocket Lab is alike. We're watching them closely. We'd like to see them expand their margins. So we just wrote about recursion days ago. So these are companies, and recursion is going to be the exception, as we said, gene editing and AI drug discovery. They are different business models, and you need to take a different approach. So we're very wary of companies that haven't gotten the gross margin bit figured out. Now, there's a website out there called Kathy's Arc, and what it does is it ranks all the assets that are holds, and then you can filter by ETF and you can do a combined. So this is rather interesting. If you do a combined, you get the list on the right. And then if you just look at ARK's flagship ETF, ARKK, you can then compare the difference. The only difference there is CRISPR Therapeutics. So Teladoc Health in, their, um, in her overall top 10 is represented there probably because it's embedded in multiple ETFs. And then you have CRISPR in the uh, innovation ETF, ARC's innovation ETF. You can see CRISPR there in the top 10. So when it comes to uh, Kathy Wood's top stocks, uh, you can see here this list is pretty representative and it's pretty safe at any time to look at their flagship ETF and consider that to be her top conviction picks just uh, based on the exercise that we've gone through today. And what's interesting then is you can see how these change over time, of course, taking into account share price movement and AUM flows. Now, just to conclude, uh, the data that we've looked at today, you could filter that and sort it by any parameters uh, to find uh, stocks in um, in, in ARC's universe, but if you want ARC to uh, dictate your investments, don't do it by aping ARC's 
buys or sells, simply let ARC manage your money. And we believe it's very bullish when ARC holds stocks in multiple ETFs, as we've shown today. And uh, make sure to stay tuned for a presentation where we'll break down uh, some of ARC's top conviction holdings. Uh, I'm going to put up another video here before I do that. Please click the Nanalyze logo on the right. Subscribe to our channel. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this today.